SCP-093, Red Sea Object. In a universe of eldritch destroyers, inexplicable phenomena, and marvelous creations, it might be surprising that one of the most interesting and evocative of the SCPs is a small stone disc that changes colors. SCP-093 is one of the earliest SCPs to be written up, and yet it continues to fascinate newcomers years later. Many SCPs are interesting because of their descriptions, their forms and functionalities, while others, such as 093, are interesting because of the extras added on, such as addendums, interviews, or in this case, exploration logs. SCP-093 is a lengthy report, but I suggest reading it for yourself to get the full experience. If you're just interested in a summary, or an explanation, however, keep watching. SCP-093 is a stone disc, generally red, that can comfortably fit into most palms. Unknown engravings and symbols cover the disc, and the color of the disc will change when held by an individual, with the color believed to be based on the regrets held by the holder. The disc also has an anomalous attraction to mirrors, and when not held or attached to a mirror, the disc will rapidly move towards the nearest mirror building up immense speed and smashing through any obstacles to get to its destination. Despite this speed, upon collision with a mirror, neither the mirror or the disc will suffer any damage, and the disc will cling to the mirror. Most notably, however, is when an individual holding the disc places it on a mirror, upon which they will proceed to move into the mirror, traveling to an alternate location. Upon learning of this, the Foundation commenced with five separate tests, sending different individuals through the mirror with supplies, weapons, and a video camera connected by a length of cable back through the mirror. Since the disc is believed to change color based on an individual's regrets, or guilt, the first test subject is an expendable D-class, convicted of murder, and with a history of attempted suicide. The D-Class fully cooperated with every step of the testing, and the disc changed into a hue of blue while held. After entering through a mirror, the subject passed into an empty lowland plain, but everything is tinged with a heavy blue color in the video feed, although the subject later states there is no odd coloring for him. Subject walks across the plain, devoid of landmarks, until he comes across a primitively dug hole. Subject is instructed to enter the hole, reluctantly doing so, climbing down with his hands 100 meters. As the D-Class reaches the bottom of the hole and continues to walk through a passage, he reaches a concrete enclosure and complains of a strong stench. Light fixtures dot the ceiling, and seven doors line the enclosure. After trying a few doors and finding them stuck shut, one of them opens into an empty room with a substance coating the walls resembling brown, burnt plastic. Subject manages to open another door with a broken key, finding the ceiling covered in the same substance, as well as a cot, a pillow, and a crate. Inside the crate seems to be food boxes, with the word cereal written on them, although the video footage shows the writing as obscured squiggles. Subject notices some articles hanging on a wall, but the writing is illegible, and most of them crumble at the slightest touch due to age. There's also a book present, and when the subject approaches it, a high-pitched screeching noise erupts from somewhere for a few seconds. After the noise ceases, subject is told to leave the room, and sees some sort of figure peeping through the door at the end of the hall before it closes. Subject continues exploring, finding a few more crumbling articles and cereal boxes, before being told to leave by control staff. Subject readily complies, complaining that the stench is getting worse, but as he begins his ascent up the tunnel, the cable attached to him suddenly tightens and starts to pull the D-class up. As the subject reaches the top, he notices nothing has changed, and begins to walk back towards the mirror. The cable begins pulling away at a 90 degree angle, and the subject turns around to see 37 figures standing behind him, each lacking identifiable features, as well as the blue tinge. Subject panics, the cable continues to be pulled in odd ways, 
and the subject begins shooting at an unseen target. Subject is finally brought back through the mirror with a foul-smelling fluid on his clothes. Looking back through the mirror, personnel noted the presence of a massive humanoid creature, at least 50 times the size of a human but with no facial features, crawling along the ground. The second test, the green test, commences with a female D-Class who stole a vehicle and caused the deaths of two children during the escape. Subject is cooperative, the disc turns green, and subject enters into a farmland landscape tinged green. The fields are barren, but the subject approaches a nearby farmhouse, circling it and finding two children's bicycles, a girl's and a boy's, as well as boy's clothes arranged descending a set of stairs. Subject screams at Control, thinking this is some sort of sick joke based on her history, but it seems that the disc might have some control over location based on the subject's past. Subject descends into the cellar, finding it largely abandoned and unremarkable, but begins to complain about a stench. She finds a hatch on the ground, with the smell being the worst around it, and she descends the hatch to find a concrete enclosure similar to the blue test, but in much better condition. In the enclosure, she finds more cereal boxes, three skeletons, and an empty revolver. Subject continues searching, finding newspaper articles, a book, clothing, toys resembling those from the 1950s, and an ethernet jack covered in a fluid so repulsive that she refuses to take a sample. Subject sees a figure at the top of the ladder as she begins to climb out, but it quickly disappears. She immediately vomits upon reaching the top of the ladder, and reports hearing a noise that Control does not. After stepping out of the cellar, she sees two of the massive humanoids crawling in the distance, noting that their arms seem to shrink and grow at different times. Ten minutes later, the humanoids disappear out of sight, and Subject is instructed to enter the farmhouse. Dust coats the kitchen, food is spoiled, and the entire decor seems to strongly resemble that of the 1950s, although the subject locates a laptop. The laptop reveals the final shutdown moments of an operating system titled Faithful OS. Continued searching finds a children's bedroom, and when subject looks out a window, she sees a city in the distance, and the video footage shows roughly 300 figures standing around the house, although subject reports seeing none of them. Subject is told to return to the mirror, which she does, but a loud groaning noise and vibration is present for both subject and control staff as subject comes back through the mirror. The Violet test involved a young male convicted of murdering a police officer during a drug bust, utilizing excessive violence. Subject was uncooperative with the tests, but entered through the mirror into an urban cityscape with a violet tinge. The city seems to be largely empty, but there are a few cars that look to be futuristic and streamlined. Most of the cars seem to emit a powerful stench, and inspection reveals their interiors are filled with a large amount of a strange brown substance. Finally, the subject finds a car that seems to be newer than the others, and is empty, so he enters the vehicle. The dashboard of the car shows no steering wheel, ignition, or other controls, only a few blank screens, implying the car is possibly autonomous. Later review of the video footage shows a humanoid figure looking into the car from outside, but subject doesn't notice it, and Control decides to send in a professional team of armed escorts to assist in the exploration. The team enters the nearest building, titled XEA Research Partners Inc., and finds a typical corporate lobby with a computer at the receptionist desk waiting for a login for Faithful OS. Much of the technology seen in the building seems to be advanced, and the team takes an elevator to the 114th floor, noting that 13 and 113 are missing from the keypad. The team gets a view of the city from the top floor, seeing that it is silent and devoid of activity, but a number of buildings have a strange brown growth attached to them, a view of the expressway sees one of the large humanoid creatures crawling along it, but the team heads back in the elevator, where they find that the button for the 74th floor has already been activated. 
They agree to go to this floor, finding another reception area, with a sign-in sheet bearing the year 1953. A logged-in computer contains text files related to appointment information, and the team finds a notepad belonging to someone named Dr. Boriziski, Blessed Purificationist. The team continues to search the floor and finds a number of large containment capsules, some of them broken and leaking a brownish material, and others intact and holding nude humans with breathing masks. Charts for these patients contain conditions, but rather than physical ailments, the charts list personality flaws or incidents that occurred with them, such as infidelity. One chart discusses that the patient was submitted to a three-day period in the Lord's Tears to cleanse her system, and another prescribes a week in the Lord's Tears to give peace of self. Suddenly, the D-class subject begins to panic and yell at the humanoid entities that are now surrounding him, visible on the video feed, but the escort team sees nothing. Entities continue to stare at the subject as one of the escort members grabs him, and the group returns to the ground floor. After leaving the building, one of the large creatures on the expressway notices the group, letting out a bellowing roar, and begins to rapidly move towards them. All but one of the team manage to make it back through the mirror, and when they attempt to head back into the mirror a short while later, they report a horrific smell. Upon going through, they find the uniform and possessions of the lost team member, but not the body. A review of the footage shows lost team member firing his weapon at the creature, which seems to be dripping a brown liquid, before being presumably eaten or absorbed by the creature. It became clear after analyzing recovered newspaper articles that something terrible occurred in this parallel world, and the Foundation became interested on whether or not any precautionary measures needed to be taken to prevent similar circumstances in our world. Because of this, rather than sending a D-class for another test, a doctor volunteered to go through for the yellow test. The doctor was cleared of any psychological issues and had no history of criminal activity. After stepping through into a yellow-tinged office environment, the doctor decided to forego the pulley return system. The office contains a number of computers, all running Faithful OS, and the doctor also finds many filing folders, some of them bearing a symbol of praying hands. Entering the elevator, the doctor notes he is on the 34th floor, and the elevator keypad lists the floors as negative 115 to 115 with no floors missing like the other building. He descends to floor negative 115, and during the lengthy descent, the camera glitches and reveals 14 other figures in the elevator with him. Another glitch shortly after reveals the doctor alone in the elevator, and he remarks on a rising stench from below. The doctor stops on the negative 110th floor where he finds an observation deck from which he can access a few camera systems. He sees thousands of broken capsule containers, as well as one of the huge creatures on the ground floor, estimated to be six stories tall. A document on the PC directs the doctor to a safe on the 54th floor, which he opens to find a notebook and a strange revolver. The doctor returns to finish the test but also notices the same text document on another computer, realizing that someone had spread a virus to put the document on every PC. This finally leads us to the red test, as SCP-093 was passed around the Foundation until it changed to a different color, which ultimately was with a service technician. The disc takes on a bright red color, and he enters into an obscured environment with no tinge of color. The technician is in a room with a rotating cylinder in the middle, and the walls are lined with countless copies of objects identical to SCP-093. The rotating cylinder is filled with holes, and occasionally beams of light will emit from the cylinder and connect with the discs on the walls. Some spaces on the walls indicate that certain discs are missing, and the technician turns around to reveal that the disc behind him is also missing 
presumably as it's the one the technician is holding. The technician descends a ladder into a clean room filled with antiquated computer equipment and a monitor displaying a flashing interval of the words clean and unclean in different colors. The technician also sees a number of container tubes filled with a blue liquid and finds a number of documents on one of the computers. A length of time later, Control loses contact with the subject as the mirror returns to normal for almost two minutes before re-establishing itself. The technician returns through the mirror and undergoes sudden convulsions during his debriefing, displaying enhanced strength and killing one of the debriefing staff. It takes a heavily armed team with automatic weapons to take him down, noting that the subject did not bleed when shot, but instead leaked a greenish-brownish substance. Lastly, this brings us to the file on the recovered documents from the various tests, which slowly bring together a number of clues. To summarize, this world is focused on the United Lands of the Sun, a highly religious yet also hypocritical country led by a number of High Fathers, principally the Most Holy Father. Living pure, sin-free lives is priority one for most people living in the land, and those that are deemed sinful are sent to facilities where they are contained in capsules with a mixture of substances, most notably one called His Holy Tears, or the Lord's Tears. Subjects were contained for various reasons, such as disobedience, wanton lust, or anything else the High Fathers deem sinful. More concerning, however, is the presence of creatures known as the Unclean, the large half-creatures crawling across the countryside. The Unclean seem to have a strange relationship with space and time, and absorb anyone they come across. The Unclean spread across the land, consuming and wiping out cities, as the areas known as the Unfertile Zones continued to grow. Areas outside of the biggest cities became desolate until eventually the largest cities fell as well, leaving the country quiet and empty. It's the final document recovered from the Red Test, however, that tells the full story. The document, written by a Foundation agent from another universe, explains that 350 years ago, this world experienced the arrival of an eldritch, godlike creature known to the people as He. This creature declared that this world was unclean, and that the only way to save it was to purge it of sinners. He bestowed upon the world a number of vast technological advancements, and said in ten years' time there would be a war to decide who is clean and who is not. The eldritch creature disappeared, and eventually, the war commenced, instigated by the Holy Union of Land, known in our world as the United States. The most notable invention created for the war was the Holy Tears substance, which was said to purge the sins from the unclean. What it actually did, however, at least the purest concentration of the tears, is some sort of genetic restructuring, turning people into the massive creatures. These creatures were attracted to pure concentrations of the tears, and so they were drawn to certain areas, known as the unfertile lands, on purpose in order to contain them. It would seem that these humanoids become servants of the eldritch creature, meant to absorb anything deemed unclean. Those that are absorbed become the faceless humanoids visible only through cameras. These individuals become eternal spirits, never to truly depart from this desolate world, and they only wish to kill the eldritch creature to end their suffering. Somehow, the creature uses the discs to travel between universes, spreading lies and conquering worlds, but the Foundation agent managed to trap it in this universe by destroying his disc and spreading the fragments through other worlds. So that's it. SCP-093 is one of a countless number of transportation devices that a godlike creature uses to travel between universes in order to conquer and destroy worlds. The people in the world the Foundation visited believed his words, accepted his technology, 
and eventually wiped themselves out, with most of them living an eternal existence of regret. SCP-093 is a lengthy tale, but it's one of my personal favorites, as it continually builds on the mystery of this desolate world, and you're inclined to continue reading to see if the pieces all fall into place. Like many skips, 093 does contain a powerful entity from outside of space and time, but more importantly, it is about the tragic tale of a civilization and their regrets. <laughs>